All right, here we go, guys. Water cycle time. Now, here's the reason why we're going to be talking about the water cycle. Kind of two reasons. One is it's part of our systems and cycles unit. And then two, uh, we're going to be talking about all of these different cycles because we're going to be able to see them when we go to the river. Okay, because at the river we're going to see how the water cycles working, how we're impacting the water cycles, things like that. So it's going to be important that you have a good understanding of what's going on in the water cycle. Now there are two drivers in the water cycle. And that's going to be gravity and the sun. Now our best friend the sun here is going to do a couple different things in terms of moving water from place to place and gravity you might not think of it but gravity plays a really important role in the water cycle as well. Now earth being a closed system means that matter cannot enter or leave the system. Right? So we can't have water coming in, we can't have water coming out, that doesn't happen. All of the water that we see here is staying here. All it's going to do is jump around from sphere to sphere, interact a little bit with the things inside of those spheres, and uh, that's kind of what the water cycle is. What's important, guys, is for us to understand the processes that happen within the water cycle, like, evap like evaporation and like um, precipitation, things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a more simplified water cycle diagram. You'll see this tons of times um, in notes in practice, in quizzes and tests. So it's important that you see, you can see this, uh, draw this, know what's happening. All right, now since we're talking about a cycle, what that means is I could start anywhere in this diagram and kind of go from place to place and end up back where I started. Now I like to start with evaporation. Now evaporation, as you can see, the arrow goes from water up into the sky, not to the sun, but up into our atmosphere. So we're starting with liquid water, liquid, liquid water, and we're turning it into gas. Okay, that's all evaporation is. Okay, that's the process right there. Now, the big player in evaporation is this guy right here. Okay, the sun. Now, what's happening is we have all these tiny little water par particles down here in the, uh, maybe this is the ocean, maybe it's a lake, and they're, they're bonded together right here, okay? And what the sun is going to do is it's going to break this bond and allow these guys to go into the atmosphere, okay? They're allowed to go up into the atmosphere now, okay? And the reason why is because now they've, they're kind of crazy, they've got a lot of energy so that they can go into the atmosphere, all right? Now, if you follow the arrows, it looks like we're going to condensation next. Now the reason why this water condenses is because as you go up through the atmosphere it gets colder and colder and colder. These crazy water molecules with all of their energy are going to be losing it and what's going to happen is that that water now is going to bond back together. Okay, There's going to be a little bond right there between these water molecules and it turns it back into a liquid Okay, in the clouds right here. So this is water, liquid water right here. Okay, so evaporation, condensation, they're opposites of each other, all right? Moving on, now we got all of this nice water in this cloud, nice big cloud, right? Okay, eventually what's going to happen is that there's going to be so much condensed water in these clouds, it's going to be really, really heavy. If we follow the arrows, we go from this cloud right here, all this water, and we're going to have precipitation. Now precipitation could be, you know, rain. Here in Minnesota, our favorite of all is probably snow, right? So that water is going to become so heavy that it's going to fall to the earth. Now, why does it fall to the earth? Okay, I just said it was heavy, right? The big player right here in precipitation is, hopefully you guys figured it out, gravity. Gravity is going to, just like it's doing right now, pulling on you, that gravity is going to pull on that water in the atmosphere and pull it down to the ground. All right, so once it pulls it down to the ground, now we'll get a little bit crazy down here and we can see we have two different arrows. Okay, we can have one arrow, this one right here, goes to this arrow right here. Okay, infiltration. Now the key part of the word infiltration is in. This water actually goes into the ground. You guys have probably heard of groundwater before. 
that's where that water comes from. It comes from infiltrated water going down to the ground. You can also kind of think of you know a Brita, a Brita filter infiltrate trickling down into the ground right here or that water that's been um, falling to the ground can hit the ground and then just kind of run off the surface and go back into either our lake or a river or our ocean right here and that's called runoff. Okay, so two things can happen when that precipitation hits the ground. It can either go into the ground or it can run off the ground. Now, if it goes into the ground, it can also go into plants, right? Now these plants, they can use the water to do uh, lots of good things like photosynthesis, which creates oxygen for us. That's a different, um, different cycle. But that water can go into these plants, and what can happen is that there's little water particles inside the leaves, and they don't want to be there anymore because they're being heated up by the sun. And what's going to happen is that water is going to go back into the atmosphere right here. Okay, These are kind of wild and crazy, just like uh, these guys down here. Lots of energy um, allows that water to break those bonds and go up into the atmosphere. Uh, evaporation and transpiration are very, very similar. The only thing that's different between those two things, or between those two processes, is where it's happening. Evaporation happens in bodies of water. Transpiration happens on the leaves of plants. Okay, so those are the only two differences between transpiration and evaporation. All right. Now those are the most important processes that you're going to need to remember for the water cycle. All right, so if you need to replay this part of the video over and over to help you remember, go for it. All right, that's what it's there for. What I'm going to do now really quick is kind of go through the definitions. You guys should probably be writing these down in your notes. All right. Um, so evaporation, like I said, is when we're taking liquid water, turning it into gas. All right. So liquid to gas. All right. And that is from the sun. That's where that energy comes from to break those bonds. All right. So when you think evaporation, the key player there is the sun. Solar energy powers evaporation. That is the only thing that's working in this part of the process. All right. Moving on to a couple other definitions, we have condensation, which is the opposite of, of uh, evaporation. Here, you can see that we're now we're going from gas to liquid, opposite of evaporation. And that's because it gets colder as you go up through the, the atmosphere. Precipitation is just the process of water falling down to the ground. All right. Now, here we go. Gravity is playing a big role on precipitation. Okay. The earth is attracted to that water. The earth wants that water closer to it, so it's going to pull it down to the surface in whatever form it's going to fall in, whether it's rain or hail, sleet, snow, whatever, right? Okay, so gravity plays a big role in precipitation, all right? Moving on, we have infiltration. There it is, infiltrate, okay? Water going into the ground, filtering into the ground. So it's the process of water moving from the surface into the ground. All right. Now, let me ask you this question. What is the key player here? What is pulling on that water to pull it into the ground? Okay, key word there is pull. Anytime you see that or think of that, you should think of, there it is, gravity. Gravity is our player when it comes to infiltration runoff. Now that's the process of water traveling on the surface. It's not going into the ground. It's traveling on the surface to some nearby water, uh, body of water, or a stream, river, or lake. Okay. Now, what is the key, po uh, key player here? Again, it is gravity. Gravity is pulling that water along the surface. Maybe you've got some water um, falling down. You know, here's some rain is falling down on this hill right here. Well, that water droplet wants to be down here. Well, gravity wants it to be down there. So what it's going to do is it's going to pull it down into this river, and then that river is going to pull it from place to place. All right? So gravity plays a big role in both infiltration, runoff, and precipitation. All right? Make sure you guys remember that. Now, here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to go through, and over on the right-hand side of your notes, you should have this diagram. I want you to see if you can figure out what each of these letters represents. So I want you to pause the video. 
and I want you to label this diagram. What do you think A is? What process? What do you think D is? What process is that? If you need to, go back, take a look at the notes. Go back through the video. That's what it's there for. So this, this is just to help you study. All right? So go through, do that, put that in your notes. When you're done, push play, and I'll kind of walk you through all the answers to this diagram. Okay, here we go. Here are the answers. A, hopefully you guys said that was precipitation. You have um, water in the air coming to the surface, falling through, through the atmosphere. B, uh, that is transpiration. You've got water particles here um, in the leaves of the plants, and that's going to be going back into the atmosphere. C, same thing. It's the grass. Might have been a little bit tricky. Okay, C is also transpiration. D on both sides, that's runoff. F and G are kind of the same thing as well. That is infiltration. That water is going into the ground. Okay, eventually it might go over here as well. Um, feed the river a little bit. Okay, hopefully you guys did all right on that. If you need to and you didn't do so well on that, you can go back, take a look at the diagram, take a look at the video, and kind of review a little bit more. Transpiration, okay, this is a process of water found in trees, or doesn't have to be trees, it could also be uh, really um, any plant. Going from, here we go, liquid to gas, that should sound familiar, okay, should sound sim uh, similar to evaporation, same process, right, evaporation is going from liquid to gas, the only pro difference here is where that water is coming from, it's coming from plants. Now, here is where we're going to tie in um, the cycles to the river. Okay, because we're impacting what's going on at the river. There are things that we've changed. That river has been there uh, a very, very long time. We have not been here as long. Okay, we've made some changes. All right, so some changes that we can make, and then the consequences that come from those changes we can develop land and develop land just means that we're going to build roads we're going to make buildings like houses uh, we're going to do some construction and what that's going to do is it's going to increase uh, the amount of soil erosion loss of groundwater flooding pollution things like that okay so here's what i mean i'm going to do a little bit of drawing all right so we're going to take an area like this right here that doesn't have anything on it, maybe just a little bit of you know, grass, maybe a tree, right? Okay, and we're gonna turn that into something that has buildings on it, okay? It has a house, okay? Now if it rains over here, what is that rain gonna do? It's gonna infiltrate, it's gonna go into the ground, feed the trees a little bit, but it's also going to fill up our groundwater down here. Okay, not a whole lot of runoff over here on the left-hand side. But if we change this and turn it into something where we've got a lot of buildings and stuff like that, okay, again, if it rains here, these buildings are made of materials that don't allow water through them. We don't want water going through our roof and things like that. Okay, so what's going to happen is that that rain is going to pile up on the ground and it's going to run off the surface. It is not going into the ground. Okay, and that's where the problems start. That's where we get a lot of soil erosion. We're going to take the soil that's on the earth and move it from place to place. That's where we get a lot of our flooding. Um, and one of the biggest things that I don't think a lot of people understand is if we don't recharge our groundwater, we're not recharging our drinking water. We get most of our drinking water from the groundwater. Okay, so if we're putting up a whole bunch of surfaces that don't allow... Uh, infiltration, we're just hurting ourselves in terms of our drinking water. Another thing we can do is change the slope of the ground, right? So let's say uh, we've got an area where you know there's this really nice hill overlooks you know a nice little valley, maybe there's a river down here, right? Now normally what happens is when it rains, this rain is going to hit the surface right here and it's a slope. I mean it's like sledding down this hill. This water is going to hit the ground and there it goes, whoop, down into the river. Lots of runoff. Not a whole lot of water actually going into the ground, right? But let's say people really like this view down here. So what they're going to do is we've got our river right here. 
And now they're going to flatten the earth. They're going to take this earth and they're going to get rid of it. They're going to move it somewhere else, right? And they're going to build a nice home right here. Okay. Now instead of that rain coming down and running off the surface, where is it going to go? Okay. Some of it is going to infiltrate into the ground, okay, because the ground is flat now, but also we've got this problem right here. We've got our house. That is going to increase the runoff. Okay, so we got a couple problems going on right here as well. All right. The other thing we could do is maybe plant more trees and shrubs. And those trees and shrubs, you should kind of understand, are going to soak up all of that water. So we're going to increase the amount of water in the ground, which is good. All right. Now, hopefully you guys are able to kind of see what's going on in the different processes happening within the water cycle. If you need to, go back, rewatch the video for that part. I think the most important part for you guys to remember is this human impact piece right here. How we can change the water cycle and where the water actually is. That's what we're going to be taking a look at um, at the river. So go back, read the or re watch the video if you need to. Otherwise, make sure you work on filling in your summary.